first I want to say thank you. Oh my pleasure. This is from everybody, everyone from everywhere. So, uh, when the bliss comes, I feel my brain is transforming. And I feel the brain is starting to uh, change. It's like the bliss is the power to change everything. And I want to ask, I have two small questions. My first question is that is more bliss going to be more transformation for the body and the mind? If I experience it more bliss, like the laughter, you remember, is that going to transform the body and the mind more to understand this non-duality in this physical world? Uh, this is my first question. Um, um... Hello? Yes, yes, sometimes, you know, it takes a moment. <laughs> oh, okay, now is it okay? Okay. Yeah, just takes oh, a, a moment. Oh, I'm so froze, so you think I've gone. Okay. Okay. Um, Where would you like to go to? Like, what's your what's your idea of um, non-duality, or where you're going to get to? Okay, I, I felt that the nothingness that nothingness is coming through the bliss, and the bliss is coming through the energy and the witness, and then all the layers, and then the physical. <laughs> so the nothingness is the source of everything. But my brain and body are still somehow not understanding in the day-to-day -day life. For example, uh, in the 24 hours, I'm, I'm not always, ex when I say I, I mean this, this physical, is not always experiencing uh, that non-duality. And when I go through a bliss, uh, bliss time, <laughs> In that time, I feel, I feel there is a fire going through me and changes everything. And I want to know if that fire, if it comes more, it changes more. For example, for example, I feel. The body and mind for example, the question comes to my mind that the yoga practices, the meditation and the Kriya Yoga and all of these things talk about enlightenment that when the Kundalini energy reaches to the seventh chakra and I feel this is the end. I feel the Kundalini is nothing. This Kundalini is just observed. I can know this. But my body and my brain still look for something. So I want to give more bliss to them so that they stop fucking. <laughs> I know it. I know that it's not about anything. It's already there. This is the nothingness talking to nothingness about nothingness. Is my experience, but I want this brain to finish it because they. I see in the internet that the brain takes some time to to transform. That's what I saw, and or maybe there's no need. I mean, I don't know. But it's not 24 hours. <laughs> um, just just uh, give me a moment and then I'll reply.
If this is all perfectly still, and the nature of everything is total stillness and non-time, this doesn't come from the past, and it's not the person that wakes up, then how can anything be transformed? The energy in the brain is to keep processing in time and to keep looking in time. And I can carry on and still total freedom can come forward. There can be bliss or pain, joy or agony, and still, this is so still. Still change. <laughs> The person is always looking at itself through time, it's always looking at itself through this and that. And that's not the reality, that's just a functioning of a brain that's interpreting in a particular way. It's like the movement on a TV screen. It's trying to find itself in the movement of the TV screen. So it's trying to find itself in all the colours and the characters and all the dramas and yet it's there all the time, perfectly still. Well, everything plays out and you'll never find yourself in the movement, you'll never find yourself in this and that, in the reprogramming of the brain. It's in the silence of everything and you're not waking up, but you might think it does and it is. It will give you, the person, more pleasure if it tells the story that it is. And there's nothing wrong with that, the appearance of pleasure. But you never wake up because you never existed. It's got nothing to do with that body-mind mechanism. That's just the side effects happening in the body-mind mechanism. It's so brilliant, this message. It's so free. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> In the personal like, person's life and it's still perceiving itself as something moving through time and this this body mind mechanism that experiences pleasure and play, pain, it can be very confusing because it keeps wanting to fix itself keeps wanting to fix what's happening. That yes, background, that background which is us, which is always here, and that, the rest doesn't matter. The rest change is not important. But it's not even a background, but I know that that's how a lot of people speak about it, but it's just not my particular language. It, that stillness, that silence, that emptiness is in everything, everywhere. It is not contained as a silent watcher behind. It is in everything, in all the movement. Even if there's a firework going on in front of us, or a massive wild party with dance music, it's so still, it's so empty, it's everywhere. It's not something you can see, and it's in the background as like awareness or watcher or consciousness or the witness, then that's something that still can be seen. This is everywhere and so still. And that's the total freedom. And the character acts out all the crazy stuff the character acts out. The dramas, the joys, the unhappiness. What was truly watching or what was truly experiencing was everything, never a person.
the person was a play. I have one question. Yeah. If what you're saying to me, if I feel that more when I wear a Rudrax, you know Rudrax? I'm oh, sorry? Do you know Rudraksha? Uh, it's a necklace that they use it for spiritual purposes that makes you to go inwards more. Mm. When I wear that, what do you say? I'm, I'm, I'm that. And when I don't wear it, I did. I wore it for four months, and now that I don't wear that. I suddenly felt a few days ago when I stopped wearing it, I came back to the physical world and I felt the pain again, I felt this again, and I feel laughter, cry. everything I started feeling again. So, if I reach there through a root rush, it's not real. It's like, it's not, because it's like a, it's like a cigarette. It's not the real. Well, no, that that's irrelevant. But the part that um, and what you said was, you feel pain, you feel pleasure. That's never meant to stop. That's meant to be, in a way, the pain and the pleasure becomes more so. When the when it stops being for someone, it becomes more intense. Like um. Like I noticed with my dog, she's such a good example. She's so into everything, and because she's so into everything, the reactions of pain and pleasure are really strong. So when I tell her that she can't do something that she wants to do, so if um, if we're out walking and there is, uh, say, deer or something that she wants to chase, and I tell her she has to sit, and I make her watch it, I see her sitting there, like shaking, because she because there's so much tension because the body wants to run and I'm stopping her, so she starts shaking. And you often see this in dogs when you stop them from doing something they really want to do, their body trembles, and that will be pain. That will be very painful, I imagine. Like to imagine if you wanted to play on the computer or you wanted to eat something and someone told you you couldn't, and you were so Want much wanting to do it that your big body began to physically shake not by a thought because a dog can't think but just because the the urge to do it is so strong and the urge to do as you're told is so strong it actually makes the body convulse so that is an, that that is a big amount of pain that will be going through the dog's body that's more intense than the the regular day-to-day -day pain or pleasure that the human feels because the separate self is always making experience less so. It makes experience um, numb. True. So actually when that veil goes, I think that the pain and pleasure becomes more intense. When I feel fear, or when I feel disappointment or rejection or any sensation, it's more so. It's so physical. The other day I had to lie. It was, um, I have the programming for some reason, I don't know if it's a side effect of what happened, but I have the programming to be a very, very honest person. Like honest, not like um, like honest is in like um, um, I just can't fake a conversation. I can't pretend. It just doesn't happen. And the other day I had to. It was one of those situations where if if I were to say the thoughts that were coming up, it would have caused such a drama. It would have really like sh shaken things up. These people never even heard of non-duality. It was very inappropriate. And I sat there and I felt the urge to say it. And then there was another urge which stopped it and my head began to shake. Wow. Like I, I began to feel what Khaleesi felt. It was so, I had to get up and walk away from the situation. <laughs> Like it's so intense. It's like it's a disease having to be honest in every situation. <laughs> but so I feel like it's such a, like pleasure and pain becomes such a physical thing. 
it becomes wow. so like um like I notice like sometimes I like to um play uh tricks on my boyfriend and I like to surprise him so I like to hide in the bedroom or hide somewhere and then when he least expects it jump out and go boo I just like to it's really stupid and I like to hide in really unsuspecting places <laughs> so it would be a real shock for him <laughs> and then occasionally he does it to me and when he does it my whole body shakes it's like it's like such an intense experience to go through so I think like like these bodies aren't designed not to feel we begin to imagine enlightenment as not feeling because we associate so much suffering with with feeling the suffering isn't the feeling though the suffering isn't the experience the suffering always is that it's happening to you and whenever there's a you there there's always a sense of incompletion in every experience so we look at then the experience so the experience of feeling fear or jealousy or any normal human feeling when we look at it and we say this is wrong I shouldn't be feeling this, I should be more enlightened or I need to swap partners or I need to do something differently. The actual, the problem is always that sense, that sense of feeling inside the body that you're experiencing things separately and it always feels like there is a lack there. It's never about the experience. So when you have that necklace on and then you take off you feel more, I don't think that's got anything to do necessarily with the collapse of the self. Feeling more is most probably more it. This is talking about an emptiness in that moreness, not a numbness, an emptiness in everything. That all of this, the source, without a doubt, without any question, without it being intellectual, the source of everything is nothing. That this is always home. There's nothing that can be born or destroyed or lost. Everything is made of the same. There is nothing outside of that. This isn't an intellectual remembering. This is the way it is, but that sense of somebody covers it. That sense of being something that's come from the past and going to the future seems to cover that this is all from the same thing. And this is all inherently free. And what, But what happens when waking up is that the brain does put a miss... Um, identification on with bliss and with pleasure because when waking up happens there's been such a cage and such a restriction on everything it releases so many blissful experiences and it does do something in the brain I uh, like the this body mind mechanism feels a lot of bliss and bliss can sometimes be a bit of a hindrance actually because if you're sitting there in bliss then cleaning the house doesn't feel you know, like you just sit there, <laughs> and then everyone comes in and they're like, you still haven't cleaned the house, and you're like, yeah, I felt really good. <laughs> like, bliss isn't always the best emotion or the best sensation to be happening. It's not always very practical. Like, sometimes I find the bliss so strong that I can't physically function, and then and it's not, it's sometimes I'm like, oh, well, I'm happy for it to, like, die down a little bit, so I function a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always the most reliable emotion it's not but it's a side effect that comes when there's been such a restriction and and then the mind associates waking up with with that feeling because it also feels like an expansion it feels like a relief it feels like and then it then it tries or gets into the story that I'm only free when I experience that and then it becomes a new cage a new cage of the person and then it kind of suffocates the bliss and the bliss goes anyway so when the bliss is there it feels free when the bliss is not there it feels it needs to have the bliss to yeah. be free and that's not actually true at all bliss is something that moves and comes and goes it's an experience it can be felt and I promise you nothing that can be felt is freedom <laughs> it's so free because if it was you could potentially lose it it's here if it was bliss you could potentially lose it because it comes and goes it's a sensation this is something that's so inherent in everything it's been there with everything and is everything but it's not based on the pleasure pain spectrum but, but this even still speakers and teachers are still talking as if bliss is it because 
often there is a great, great, huge movement into bliss. They can actually explain what happens in the brain as to why people that have woken up experience a lot of bliss. It's because something, a part that is too complicated for me to explain now, but it's, it's actually a very, very common side effect. And it's, it's, um, and it's the biggest confusion in spirituality. And I've met teachers that have taught for 20 years, and they were having great bliss, and they thought that was it, and then suddenly they lose the bliss. Sorry? Can you tell me the confusion? I want to know. The confusion is, is that waking up is an experience. That's the confusion. And often that experience is, is, is either something intellectual, a feeling, I would say bliss is a feeling, or um, some form of knowing in the world of the forms. And waking up, or what's being talked about here, is nothing to do with experience. All experiences are coming and going and fleeting. Nothing. So this is nothing intellectual that we're talking about. It's nothing to do with the feelings. It's nothing to do with the perception. But yet it's here inherently in everything. But you can't see that. Because you is already moving in time. So this is nothing experiential. But it might even seem that I am talking about something experiential because it's as if I'm pointing to you. But actually these talks are in complete silence. <laughs> these talks have never gone anywhere. It's still the same list. <laughs> and really, I've told you all this information and it's all useless. It's all going nowhere. But the whole time, there has been absolute stillness. It's never moved. It's just seemed to move as if something's happening. <laughs> Nothing is changing. No, ever. No matter what feelings come up, even if you feel angry, joy, bliss, relaxation, even if there's lots of thoughts, a contraction or not a contraction, nothing's ever changed. It just seems to have. And, it, and what the person has got lost in is believing they are something which is in that movement. And when they suffer because they try to pin it down, they're always trying. It's like trying to grab onto water. <laughs> and it's so much effort and they always are fearing because they feel like they're losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I've only got 20, 30, 40 years more of life to work this out. And the whole time it's been there. Hiding in the most obvious place. And nothing was ever lost. Nothing was ever endangered, even in the greatest hell. <laughs> so, so we are dead. Nothing else. It, nothing else. Yeah. Everything, everything is dead, and yeah. everything comes from that, yeah. and everything goes back to that, and nothing else. Everything else changed. Yeah. Just that is there and yeah. here and everywhere. Yeah. And we are dead. And it's not else. you that wakes up to it. You mm. never existed. There was mm. never anybody there. Somebody cannot know this or wake up to this. It's not about the change in the brain chemicals. This cannot be a personal thing because all of that is in movement. It can never be an enlightened human. Or, everything always is inherently enlightened. There's never been anything that wasn't. It's just yeah. this person sewn together, making it seem like there's somebody linear, somebody separate. If I 
if I ask, why does these things happen? Like this, why does, does these separations happen? If I ask why? I would say that most probably why, in an intellectual reason, thing, it's most probably the, the separation, like some speakers like to say, and I think it's a sweet answer, so it can find itself again. And I think that's a sweet answer. But I actually think it's more practical than that. I think it solely was to do with the evolution of the human. I think evolution is a nice explanation for what's happening with objects. Yeah. They're always about growing, growing, growing. And and I like when I I like it like sexual selection and evolution. It really really fits with what happens in the objects, and and I the the human isn't separate from that. And I think a sense of separation mm. made survival very important and made us very successful. And that's what I always, I only think it was about that. I think it's totally impersonal. I don't even think it's about no thing finding itself again. Although I like that. I like I like it when people say that I think it's funny and sweet. I think it's simply that the human body mind mechanism became more efficient when it believed it existed. When I look at my rabbits or Khaleesi the dog, like they they are just existing from one moment to another. So they're not storing or or, or holding on or being they are being greedy but in a very limited sense, they're not thinking about tomorrow. But because the human begun language, it then began to think about its body in 10 years time. We have our whole life mapped out. We have even our pensions. Well, I don't, but most people have pensions. <laughs> <laughs> and homes and mortgages, like six, uh, 30 year mortgages and jobs for life. So, but the animal, most of the animal kingdom doesn't have the ability to think like that. And I think that as soon as we began to be able to think and speak in a more into clever way, we had to have something to refer to, and the more that that was referred to, the more that grew to be to feel like somebody. But I think it was just a functioning, just like the grass grows, the sun shines. It was just something that happened in the human. I suspect now that if that doesn't stop, we're going to kill ourselves because we succeeded so well. There's not enough room on this planet if we keep breeding like we do <laughs> and if we keep succeeding because what it does when that collapse happens is it, it doesn't, it's not that this is in any way personal but it makes, it makes the character less greedy. Like, um, I, I'm very, very content with um, a very basic lifestyle. I mean, I'm not a get. I like that I have a home that I don't have to pay a huge mortgage on, or I like all these things. But I'm very content with a very basic lifestyle. It makes absolutely no difference here going to a chippy. I don't know if you have chippies, like a fish and chip shop, like a, a you know where you pay a pound, one pound. Oh no, you won't even be in pounds. Oh, just a very cheap amount of money, <laughs> very cheap amount of money for for your dinner as to one where you pay a lot, a lot of money for your dinner. I mean, both are, are experience. It doesn't, really, it doesn't matter. I, I, I have a preference to eat more healthily than chips all the time. But I really enjoy chips out of the paper bag. I also enjoy going to a fancy restaurant, but it makes no difference. I have no striving that comes up for that. I like it, and people often buy it for me, and I'm very, very lucky but actually in my lifestyle I don't actually even if I earn the money don't spend it because I don't really have the the urges for that so it makes you less greedy and it's the same with my boyfriend Paul he also doesn't have like sometimes we have very rich friends that will take us to posh places and it makes no difference we go to the chippy and we have dinner in front of the TV or just on the sofa or in the car we go to or we go to like a five-star restaurant that costs you 500 pounds a meal or something. It's nice, but it really makes absolutely no difference. It's, it, it's all experiences. I love, love traveling in India where I'm eating off the floor. Um, you, you eat off a, a leaf on the floor. And I really like it, sitting in a nice chair in a very elegant 
restaurant, but who cares? So then because that, it, that urge isn't there, then there's no urge to try and strive and get loads for yourself. And I think that is a side effect of waking up. I don't think that's to do with, that's nothing to do with non-duality, but I think it's a side effect that comes in the body-mind mechanism. I'm not positive about that. But, uh, yeah, I haven't met somebody where that's collapsed, a greedy somebody where that's collapsed. But I think that, that when that waking up happens, then the body-mind mechanism will be very happy with enough. Like enough is enough. It doesn't need to spend 17 hours a day working to try and get more. Actually, I, I prefer to sit around more and do less. I remember that story about this Mexican guy that went fishing and a businessman came along and he'd fish and then fish for two hours in the morning and the rest of the day he'd sit in the hammock and play and talk with his family on the beach. And a businessman came along and said, you do so well fishing. If you fished all day for 20 years and sold the fish, you could be a billionaire. And then he says, and then what would I do? And he says, well, then you would... Uh, uh, you know, then you'd have a billion dollars to to retire, and he says, "What and do the same that I'm doing, sitting on the beach and playing with my family? Like it makes no difference. It's only when there's that sense that you are not enough and that you're something separate that objects become God, and then there has to be that greed. I suspect now because we survive so well and we're killing ourselves, which we are doing." We are going to kill ourselves if we carry on like this, as a human race. It's not even us that's going to kill us. The planet is going to wipe us out if we carry on doing this. <laughs> it's like, we all know it, and we're all like... <laughs> <laughs> so I suspect that evolution's doing its dance again, and this collapse is happening. But at the end of the day, we don't know, and that, at the end of the day is not relevant for waking up. Waking up isn't intellectual and doesn't need to be thought about. But I, coming from a science, well, not a scientific background, but having a boyfriend that's very much into science, and when you look at it from an evolutionary perspective, it really makes sense. That that's why now non-duality is becoming so widespread. And also in our society, people are getting so much because we're so successful that they're quickly realizing that it's not in the material. Although it surprises me that more don't realize. It's surprising that it surprises me that people manage to carry on living just with the carrot of wealth. And all these problems come from thoughts. Sorry. And all these problems come from thoughts. Um, not exactly thoughts. What? It's, it's like an energetic sense that's happened, but originally it came from language and the ability to think, but then it became an energetic thing. Like anger, you could say, so you think, how dare they do it to me, and then there's a sensation, like an energetic expression of anger. So it's like that repetition, you, 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 or me, 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 has given the energetic sense, and it's actually become an energetic field that's held in every cell that feels like you are this body. But it, so it didn't exactly, it came, I think, separation came with um, the possibility for the intellect, so with the intellect, so with the growth of the brain, so when we began to be able to speak. But it's become an energetic thing, this separation. It's not just about thinking. And what can happen is there can be that collapse of separation and there still can be the use, the, the use of words, I, and there still could be the, the appearance of the character, Lisa, but it's no longer an experience or a separate person anymore. It simply is a functioning that's happening. But it does come, it seems, with um, only with the human brain. I do not see this in any animals. It, it doesn't... My dog, for sure, doesn't have a sense of self. And the rabbits are way too stupid to have a sense of self. <laughs> They're so funny. They sit. They, it really makes me chuckle watching them. I, like they sit. They they poop and then they sit in the poop and it all gets stuck to their fur and then. <laughs> it's 
happy as anything. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, one moment, poop, poop. <laughs> and then Khaleesi the dog follows them and eats all the poop that they poop. And I'm like, there is no way these animals have any sense of self. One's covered in poop and the other's eating the other's poop. <laughs> If I could explain to Khaleesi what she was doing, I'm sure she would be embarrassed, but she has no sense of self, so she can't. <laughs> but, oh, I'm eating someone's poo? <laughs> they will give up being a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> So the yogic practices that makes people powerful to have the reading mind and all of those things are just nothing because all of them come from nothingness. Yeah, they're nothing. And also they don't indicate enlightenment. You could have somebody that has that power and it's, they still believe they're somebody with that power. Often mm -hmm. why when people wake up and they have those experiences, it's, it, it's like when this begins to reveal itself, these experiences can happen because there's no longer a filter or a containment so these things can happen but also these things can happen when there's still a huge sense of self and they they like um and they think it's them like they they've read someone's mind actually it's a very scientific thing as to what's happening we have something called in humans we have something called m mirror neurons so we have the ability to look at each other and to mirror back what we're feel what you're feeling so i i can look at you and it's as if i can feel what you feel and that's nothing to do with being psychic it's to do with being human it's just that when we are deluded by being somebody we we're so um there's such an engrossment in that somebody that all these sensitive feelings get covered it's so engrossed but it's a very natural thing to be able to read humans this is what we're meant to do. We have a very large part in our brain put towards mirror neurons. So when you have an expression, this body will feel the same. And also empathy. And some bodies will have larger degrees of it and less, and, and some will have less. Like women are meant to have more empathy. More empathy. The leaders of the group are meant to have less. So the ones in charge are meant to have less. And the hunters are meant to have less because they've got to kill the animals. And if they're feeling empathy with the animals, they can't. If they're feeling empathy with their environment, they can't destroy it. But the women yes. are meant to have that, but they're not the ones that are meant to be the hunter. It's really, it's amazing as humans how we know so little about it, about what this body mind mechanism is. And they're so beautiful in all their expression. But we take it as such a personal thing. Like um, like if somebody wakes up and then suddenly they have more of a there's more of an awareness of these mirror neurons. Suddenly they're psychic or they have these special powers. It's not special powers. It's human. We're amazing creatures. We're so amazing, uh, and we miss it by our by this contraction, which is always me 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 me. When it's looked at impersonally, then it's able to express itself like often when I'm speaking I'll say wow that's so beautiful and it doesn't it's nothing to do with me it's just what comes out of that this this body and it's nothing personal but it's the same with all the bodies like there's nobody that's really psychic but that's that body's role and if the body's role is to be the leader with less empathy in our society we demonize that and we say but there's meant to be characters which can do these things which have less empathy and we say oh he's such a bad person or she's such a bad person because she did this or that and we can't understand why she killed an animal or why um, why she didn't have any feelings but they're meant to be set up like that we need all different personalities in order to survive not all of us can be the killer of animals it's such a hard job and that's what we have to do to eat like the positive and negative Yeah. It's such a, and, but it's so sad what we do in society now. We hide it away and do terrible things. We wouldn't do such terrible things if it was in the open. We just were not set up to be that terrible in the open. In the open, we would balance it out, and if we didn't hide it away, we would have enough characters that have enough empathy, empathy to stop it. But because the ones with empathy don't see it, it doesn't get stopped. 
And it's not enough to watch it on YouTube. It doesn't do enough. You have to see it. So there would be, if we saw an animal being tortured, there would be a hundred to two humans which would stop it. Yes. We're not really, really, like we, we have this empathy thing. We, we work as a society, as a community, so we're able to interpret others' pain. So if we saw an animal, what we do to animals is terrible behind closed doors. If we all as a society watched it in person, we would stop it. And the same with um, sweat clothes. Like all of us wear clothes from sweatshops, but because we can't see it, we can't stop it. We have yeah. to see it. And so then the ones that can do it, do it behind closed doors and then make loads of money from it. And it's not that they're bad, it's just that they don't have the em empathy chemicals to stop it. It's a shame what we can do in mass production. Yes. It's why our society will become smaller. It needs to. It's too big. We do too many terrible things as a big organism. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's nice speaking with you, Nima. <laughs> uh, the, okay, you said that the, even when the self is there, it can happen. So that happens, is that, can be equal to Kundalini coming up? Well, I don't know what you mean. What, the, the mind reading or the... the... The waking up. No, waking up's got nothing to do with Kundalini. That's all to do with the um, um, with the side effects that can happen, or it's to do with the body mind mechanism. It's all that's all in experience. That can be a side effect because there's been loads of energy that's been held in by this sense of self, but it's not. Um, that's that's just the side effects which happen in the body. And it's so different to each body mind mechanism that you couldn't possibly map it. You couldn't possibly un understand it, but it will happen. It's never been the person. So if there's been to be massive energetic explosions in the body mind mechanism, then that will happen. It's never the person that's waking up. That's part of what, ha what can happen. It happened here. Massive energetic changes in the body. But it's not something you can know, and it's not something you can map. Some people do, and it has been mapped in the past, but I think this is arrogance, to be honest. I think it's, it's so unique to each body mind mechanism. Wow, that's true. And I think that that's just the mind saying, this is what it's like for me, so this is what it'll be like for others. And wow. that's not the case. It's so wow. unique, because if you've got a body mind mechanism that's programmed in a a specific way and is already very energetic and experiencing then it's not going to have such a big energetic awakening if you've got one that's really repressed of its feelings and feels very numb then it will more than likely have a bigger one it's so different it's really but it all happens by itself you don't need to know the roadmap you were never anything to do with anything you was a chemical reaction happening it's like the sun asking, how do I burn, or how do I get a bigger explosion, or will I get a bigger explosion? It's, it will happen. It's just the way it is, it cannot yeah. change. No. And it's all and happening then, on, on its own chord, when it's really seen that nothing is the orchestra. There's nobody that's controlling anything, and it's all yeah. perfect timing. And then we read the pages that the chakras are like this and the kundalini like this and it doesn't make sense because it's not meant for this moment. No, and it's just a description of their experience and their experience yeah. is that particular unique body-mind mechanism that will never be repeated again. Wow, that's true. But it's really, I like, like some of the stuff that they say like, um, you know with the chakras, I always have a sense that that is where the sense of self resides. Like, they have these different points, and it's like the sense of self does move between them, and you have, like, senses of self that are more in the groin, senses of self that are more in the heart. So I do, yes. I understand where they come from, but they're not a road map. There's no road map. Life is so unique and diverse in its expression. 
Yes. Even they themselves didn't have a roadmap and they experienced it firsthand. Yeah, and then they, but then they they wrote it down as if that was a way for everyone else, and it really, <laughs> yeah. it really, it's then putting another jacket on other people. The way yeah. it's seen here is that non-duality, the speaking of non-duality, is enough, and then everything else it will happen. And and it's going to be confusing, and it's going to see dark times and light times, the sense of self. But eventually, it will get exposed, and it will see it was all a perfect play. It was like the music. And then in the middle of the music, the notes saying, but hang on, hang on, which one comes next? At which point will I... It will happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need any roadmaps. No. But the person, when it feels scared, it wants to then map it out. So then it thinks, okay, this is my next step, or this is what happens. But the fear will pass, like everything. And even if you, if even if the person maps it out, then that's what it does. But that will too pass, and then the next moment you'll be drinking your orange juice or <laughs> feeding the dog, and you'll have forgotten all about waking up or anything. It will simply be as it is. That's by its own. Mm -hmm. All of it, everything, just like the wind, just like the sunlight. This has always been effortless. Even with the effort that the person's put in, it's always been happening on it. By itself, the trees grow, the wind blows, the sun shines, the computer, the room, everything is here, everything is. It's only the separate person that's saying, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what a lie. <laughs> I need to know, I need to know. He only wants to know because it's afraid. And that's okay, you could, you could pretend. <laughs> The person is so retarded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even though we're the most intelligent animals that we know of yet, it still is very simple. <laughs> the person is the most retarded and he says, I created the computer. I yeah. created the world. You're the most retarded. <laughs> you don't create anything. Everything was created before it came. <laughs> wow. wow. There's nothing else to talk about. <laughs> and the amazing thing is that talking will still happen. Like, yeah, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Paul, my boyfriend, we always say, yeah, we've got nothing left to talk about and we spend hours talking every day and we're like... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, it was lovely speaking with you again, Nima. Really you too, nice. You Thank you so much for everything. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye. -bye.